Hi, my name is Inu Song and I'll be presenting our work, Rapidly Adaptable Legged Robots via Evolutionary Meta Learning. This is joint work with Google AI Robotics and Columbia University. In order to introduce the audience to our work, we first discuss the motivations and background work. Locomotion is one of the most fundamental skills of all land animals, having evolved naturally in multiple species, both for quadruped and bipedal stances. For instance, this includes the cheetahs, which are the fastest land animals on Earth, and the elephants, which are the largest land animals on Earth, and also as humans. So far, robot locomotion research has displayed an impressive set of results to reproduce this natural skill. On the left, you can see the dancing behavior from Boston Dynamics Spot Robot, while on the right, you can see that the MIT cheetah jumping around and sprinting through piles of leaves. But unfortunately, robots can be fragile to slight changes in dynamics. On the left, you can see a humanoid robot fail to open a door and fall down, while on the right, you can see another humanoid fail to walk up a flight of stairs, both due to different test environments than the ones they were designed for. Deep learning methods for robotics have attempted to tackle this problem of distribution shifts between simulation and reality. We characterize some of these methods, their assumptions, and potential drawbacks. On the left, domain randomization acts as a form of data augmentation and focuses entirely on simulation data by randomizing environment conditions, such as the color and location of objects, to make the trained policy robust for the real world. In the middle, model-based adaptation allows a dynamics model to adapt itself over time to different terrains from incoming sensor data. On the right, meta strategy optimization adds an extra network which produces an extra context vector that encodes new environment data, which is fed into the policy. The goal of our work is to quickly adapt the robot's behavior to a different environment than the one that the robot is trained for. We use a model-free approach, which only needs to train a feed-forward policy mapping states to actions. And our approach also uses real-world data at test time for more accurate adaptation. Some of the challenges of this approach consist of number one, sample efficiency of adaptation as real world data is expensive. We should only use a handful of episodes of real world data at most. Number two, the question arises of how to actually reuse the real world data to adapt a pre-trained policy. This leads us to model agnostic meta learning or MAML by Finn et al 2017 which is introduced by the figure and exploits gradient-based adaptation methods. For MAMO and robotics, one proposed method is to use the following construction. We learn a good initialization or so-called meta policy between tasks, which can turn into the so-called adapted policy. The process for producing this adaptation is by a U operator whose input is the meta policy shown by theta, and the output is an adapted policy shown by theta prime. Originally, the default process in the MAMO paper was by using a gradient update. Combining this into one pipeline creates a bi-level optimization formulation. In the policy gradient case of MAML, or so-called PG MAML algorithm, the U operator is a policy gradient, but estimating this U operator's gradient is highly non-trivial and complicated. Furthermore, using purely gradients in both levels in this bi-level framework does not allow non-differentiable operators, which we will see later can be quite restrictive. MAML is visually represented in the bottom left corner where the meta policy may perform gradients with respect to any one of the given losses to output an adapted policy. Originally, MAML for reinforcement learning used standard Majoko benchmarks, but modified their reward functions to shape behaviors, such as producing the forwards backwards half cheetah, which consists of two tasks, one moving forward and one moving backwards. We see from this video, consistent with the MAML formulation, that the meta policy runs in place, preparing to adapt, while the policy gradient updates allow to adapt to either the backwards or forwards task. However, for real-world legged robots, there are some challenges that need to be resolved first. One is that exploration is important for gradient estimation and fine-tuning. PG MAML performs task exploration by sampling random actions from its required action distribution, but this can lead to jerky actions, which are bad on real-world robots. The other is that the noisy environment can give inaccurate objective measurements. As seen here, if f of theta is the expected cumulative reward, we might observe instead f tilde, which possesses an additional noise term epsilon. We present ES MAML, a previous work that combines evolutionary strategies, or ES, with the MAML framework. The base ES method treats the total reward as a black box function and estimates gradients by using local perturbations via finite difference methods. ES works particularly well for continuous control tasks as the black box framework allows deterministic policies which doesn't exacerbate the noise problem. 
Exploration is also performed by parameter changes, not by the policy's random actions, which is the case for policy gradient. ES MAML possesses all of the mentioned benefits, but also allows a non-differentiable adaptation inner loop operator, shown here as the U operator. An important example of such an operator is the hill climbing operator, which enforces monotonic improvement when the environment is deterministic. As you can see, previous experiments from the ES MAML paper show that it can be incredibly stable on certain MAML benchmarks, such as Majoko Swimmer and Majoko Walker, due to its use of deterministic policies. Furthermore, ES MAML's parameter space exploration allows it to solve tasks that would otherwise be hard for PG MAML, such as the four corner task, where the policy does not receive any reward signal unless it explores and comes near the goal point in one of the corners. This plot also shows that when it comes to exploration, hill climbing, or HC, is the strongest adaptation operator in comparison to Monte Carlo gradient estimation, or MC, especially because hill climbing enforces monotonic improvement. Now that we've touched on the background, we address issues that occur in the real world. In the real world, noise occurs in all experiments as shown by the large variance in runs when using the same policy. This is generally because we cannot reproduce the same exact physical conditions in reality. For a legged robot, the most significant factors for noise are caused by slight changes in object positions, wear and tear of the robot throughout usage, and also inaccuracies in sensor data. We can represent this abstractly as additive noise in the expression, where epsilon is a noise, f tilde is observed objective, and the original f of theta is the objective we'd like to maximize. Sequential hill climbing is the original hill climbing algorithm proposed only for deterministic environments. While it leads to monotonic increase when there is no noise, its search direction becomes inaccurate when noise exists. Instead, we need to modify this method. One such way is to repeatedly use the same input p times and average the trials, as shown in the figure with the same colors, in order to get an approximation on the expected objective. Unfortunately, this possesses numerous drawbacks. One of these drawbacks is its low sample efficiency. Instead of using these trials to explore the parameter space, they are being used repeatedly on the same parameter. Furthermore, this method is inaccurate because the noise is not an IID random variable. For example, the robot motor overheats throughout testing, causing correlations between different runs. In addition, the noise is not zero mean. For example, the robot can accidentally fall down during testing, producing a very large negative reward. These issues lead us to your batch hill climbing operator, which takes p perturbations around the input parameter and takes the best trial, even if its evaluation was noisy. This is shown in the figure where each of the p perturbations leads to different policies shown by different colors. This algorithm is sample efficient as each perturbation is a diverse parameter which leads to better exploration. Furthermore, it avoids strict assumptions on the noise and works even when the noise is adversarial. In fact, we have theoretical guarantees that batch hill climbing is convergent for strongly concave objectives even when the noise is adversarial and a fraction of them can be negatively unbounded as shown in this expression. The convergence rate's constants depend on the properties of the concave function, such as its smoothness and Lipschitz constants, as well as diameter, along with the fraction of unbounded noises and fraction of small error noises. The proof relies on the fact that the batch mechanism, with high probability, selects a good ascent direction even when there is noise. We now discuss the experimental framework for the Minotaur robot. In our reinforcement learning framework, the Minotaur task is a Markov decision process consisting of the following. The observation is what we can actually measure using the robot's onboard sensors. The observation is given as the roll and pitch angle of the robot base, as well as all eight motor angles, and a phase variable, which is represented by sines and cosines. The action consists of the desired swing and extension of each leg using position-controlled motors. The desired motor angles are converted into motor torques through a PD controller. The reward function is defined to encourage gradually increasing velocity via a guiding maximum velocity, or V underscore max, along with penalizing the energy, which is calculated by the products of the torques and angular velocities of each of the eight motors. We train the meta policy in simulation using the pi bullet simulator, which allows varying physics parameters. Most notably, these consist of the leg and body mass, battery voltage, foot friction, motor damping, motor strength, and control latency. We can then sample different combinations of physics parameters where each combination corresponds to a task in meta-learning. During training and simulation, we see that the meta policy fails on certain tasks while the adaptive policy corrects for such behavior. 
For instance, on the top animation, the left side shows the meta policy falling down, while the right animation shows the adapted policy walking correctly. The robot measurements are displayed in the plot. Another example is in the bottom animation, where the meta policy makes sharp turns, while the adapted policy produces a straight line to reduce energy expenditure. Now, we apply our techniques to the real robot. In our real world Minotaur, we designed two experiments. One is the mass voltage task, where a 500 gram mass is placed on its side with the battery voltage lowered to reduce leg synchronization. This combination is to mimic a realistic situation when the robot is carrying a load under low battery. The other is the friction task, where all of its rubber feet are replaced with tennis balls to reduce friction, which hinders its ability to walk. This is to mimic a situation when the robot is walking on a low friction surface, such as ice. As we can see in this video demonstrating the mass voltage task, when using ES Mammal, the initial meta policy falls over on its side, while the batch hill climbing process gradually produces an adapted walking policy in at most 50 episodes. From the measurements on the robot, we see that quantitatively, our ES Mammal with batch hill climbing is indeed adapting well. On the left figure, the x-axis represents the number of rollouts during adaptation, and the y-axis represents the reward calculation. The blue curve showing our method increases gradually throughout batch hill climbing. The red curve shows that PG Mammal does not improve, and the black line represents domain randomization. Notice that in all three cases, their initial performance is approximately the same. On the figure to the right, we measure the robot's roll angle throughout rollouts from ES Mammal, and see that the roll angle is corrected to 0.0, a horizontal body position. In this video, we display the trajectories between domain randomization, PG Mammal, and our method. This clearly shows that batch hill climbing produces a much farther walking trajectory than the other methods. Similar to before, we again see that the blue curve representing our method gradually increases its reward. This is also shown on the figure to the right, where the trajectories are displayed by a bird's eye view, and the adaptive policy trajectories are farther than the meta policies. In this section, we discuss our ablation studies and simulation. First, we produce a scatter plot where the x-axis is the training iteration in ES Mammal, while the y-axis is the reward difference between the adaptive policy and the meta policy. Each dot represents one of 50 distinct tasks that the policies are evaluated upon. We show that adaptation is indeed needed for this benchmark, as there are multiple tasks which have high reward difference throughout training. We further compare ES Mammal and PG Mammal by plotting their corresponding domain randomization policies, which are shown in red, their meta policies, which are shown in yellow, and their adaptive policies, which are shown in blue. We see that not only does ES Mammal consistently outperform PG Mammal, but also the hill climbing operator enforces the adaptive policy performance to be higher than the meta policy performance. However, PG Mammal has no such guarantees, and we thus see that actually its meta policies reward is higher than the adaptive policies reward which shows that in PG Mammal's adaptation procedure might even be hurting its performance. Finally, we compare the average batch hill climbing methods in ES Mammal by constructing noisy simulation benchmarks. To simulate noise, we randomized the Minotaur agent's starting position and added random push forces on the agent. We find that to the right, batch produces higher adaptation gaps than average hill climbing. We also added random push forces to the nav 2D and toy environment from the original Mammal paper and showed that batch hill climbing produces higher adaptation performances. In conclusion, we have demonstrated a successful application of MAML on a real robot. ES MAML plus batch hill climbing, which is our method, enables fast adaptation on robots. Our method is less sensitive to noisy robot experiments and allows all of the benefits of regular ES for robotics, which include deterministic stable policies, as well as exploration via parameter space. In terms of future work, we consider the two following important objectives. One is continuous adaptation, where we ask how we can make the robot adapt to constantly changing environments. The other is improving sample efficiency, where we ask if we can reduce the number of rollouts required to perform adaptation by using model-based techniques and whether there are any better adaptation operators than batch hill climbing. For more details, please see the following links, which are the archive, the Google AI blog, the video, and the code. Thank you.